Okay, so let me get started with today's class. Uh, so uh, today what we are going to do is that like we are uh, going to look at what is called as a Nyquist plot, right? So if you uh, recall where what we have been discussing, we have been uh, looking at frequency response. And uh, what was frequency response? It is the uh, response of uh, the class of systems under study to sinusoidal inputs, right? And we saw that if you have stable LTA systems, uh, if you give a sinusoidal input of frequency omega, the steady state output was also a sinusoid of the same frequency, but scaled in amplitude and shifted in phase, right? And the uh, entity that becomes extremely important in that case is what is called as a sinusoidal transfer function, right? G of J omega, right? So that's what we have been looking at. And uh, what we have been doing is that like uh, we learned about the Bode plot, you know, like where we uh, figure out how to uh, graphically illustrate or represent the sinusoidal transfer function in terms of the uh, magnitude and phase, right? As omega varies from uh, very low frequency to very high frequencies, right? So that's what we did in the Bode diagram. So the Nyquist plot is once again uh, a visualization of the sinusoidal transfer function, but a slightly different visualization, okay? We'll see what this is, okay? So what is this Nyquist plot, okay? So a Nyquist plot is nothing but the plot of uh, uh, G of J omega, which is a sinusoidal transfer function, okay? In the complex plane, that's it, you know, like, so it is uh, pretty uh, straightforward to understand. So what we do is that like we essentially plot the real part of the sinusoidal transfer function versus the imaginary part of the sinusoidal transfer function in the complex plane, okay? So that is the uh, Nyquist plot, okay? So we, we, some people will call it as the uh, G of S plane, okay? It's to indicate that uh, it is no longer the S plane as such, that is we are not tracing the variable S but rather we are tracing the transfer function, right, G of S, right? So that's also a complex valued function, right? Uh, so people will call it as the G of S plane or G of J omega plane and so on. So it is essentially uh, the plot of the real part of G of J omega versus the imaginary part of uh, G of J omega as omega is varied from 0 to infinity, okay? So that's what happens here, right? So as we vary omega from uh, low frequencies to high frequencies, what happens to the real part and the imaginary part, okay? So when we ask the question, you know, like, see, what is the application of this Nicholas plot, right? How do you use it in practice? We are going to look at that, right? And we are going to see how it, it the Nyquist plot can be used for uh, even like uh, stability analysis, right, and even control design, okay? So that's something which we are going to uh, look at as we uh, go along, okay? So uh, what we will do is that uh, we will once again construct the Nyquist plot of uh, uh, individual blocks that we have been uh, learning, right? And then we will uh, identify some difference between the Nyquist plot and the Bode plot, okay, as we uh, go along, okay? So let us start with, uh, you know, like, uh, of course, I am not starting with a constant because a constant is just plotted on the real axis, right? So if I take my uh, first building block as k, like what we did in the Bode diagram, so that k is going to be either plotted on the positive real axis or the negative real axis depending on its sign, right? So that's pretty straightforward, okay? So what happens from the other factors on it? Suppose let's say I consider 1 by s, right, which was another factor that we considered. So then what happens? G of j omega is going to be equal to 1 divided by uh, j omega. And uh, this can be rewritten as minus j by omega. Do you agree? Correct. So I can I just multiply by uh, multiply and divide by j. I just uh, write it as minus. Zero. So this I can write it as zero plus j times minus one over omega. So essentially, what I'm doing is that I'm just writing as the real part and the imaginary part, right? And even I can follow an alternative representation of uh, uh, complex uh, valued functions, right? I can write their magnitude and phase, right? Correct? So I can write this as, what is the magnitude of this uh, function now? 1 by omega, right? What is its phase? It is going to be 
minus 90 right. So, that is what we are going to get because uh, so you see that the function is always going to be on the negative imaginary axis right. So, the plot of this uh, uh, particular factor right. So, consequently I can rewrite like this and so uh, if I want to plot this right. So, how will this look like? So, let us say I plot this on this g of s plane right. So, what will happen as o, as omega starts from uh, 0 uh, where are we going to start from? So, essentially I am going to start from minus j infinity right and as omega tends to infinity where am I going to end up with? I am going to end up at the origin right. So, that is what is going to happen. So, essentially what is going to happen is that the Nyquist plot of this particular factor is going to be along the uh, negative uh, imaginary axis this is omega tending to 0 and this is omega tending to uh, infinity right. So, that is the uh, Nyquist plot of uh, 1 by s ok. So, that is what happens here right. So, now let us essentially plot for a few more factors then we will discuss a few points right. So, now, now let us uh, plot it for the derivative factor g of s is s. So, then g of j omega becomes uh, j times omega. So, this I can re rewrite it as once again 0 plus j times omega. So, 0 is the real part j omega j omega is the uh, imaginary part right. So, so in terms of magnitude and phase what will happen I can rewrite this as omega times omega and plus 90 degrees right. So, that is what is going to happen. So, what is going to happen to the Nyquist plot of this particular factor uh, at very low frequencies as omega tends to 0 where am I going to start from? I am going to start from the origin right because uh, the uh, value becomes 0 and as omega tends to infinity I go to infinity along the imaginary axis ok. So, that is what is going to happen. So, for this the Nyquist plot is given in green right. So, you see that it is just uh, along the positive uh, imaginary axis ok. So, that is what happens uh, for this uh, uh, derivative term ok right ok. So, now uh, let us go forward and then look at other factors right. So, what is the next factor that we consider? g of s is 1 divided by T s plus 1 right. So, this I can rewrite uh, if I want to figure out the sinusoidal transfer function this can be written as 1 divided by 1 plus uh, j times T omega right correct. So, if I multiply and divide by the conjugate and then simplify what will I get? I if multiply and dividing by the conjugate which is going to be 1 minus j times t omega I am going to get 1 divided by uh, 1 plus uh, t squared omega squared uh, minus j times t omega divided by uh, 1 plus t squared omega squared. Do you agree? That is going to be the real part and the imaginary part ok. So, in terms of magnitude and phase uh, how can this be rewritten or uh, what do you think will be the magnitude of this transfer function? It is going to be just 1 divided by square root of 1, pl 1 plus t square of square. See uh, by now I think uh, I am sure all of us are getting more and more comfortable right. So, you look at the uh, function itself right. So, if you have this uh, complex valued function you want to find the magnitude it is just the uh, basically you just take the uh, you have a ratio you just take the ratio of the individual magnitudes right. So, that is what you have right. So, you just uh, uh, do that and what is going to be the phase is once again it is going to be the uh, algebraic sum right. So, what is going to be the phase here? The phase is going to be minus tan inverse of omega t right. So, that is what we are going to have for this particular uh, factor right. So, that is what we get is it clear? So, so now I am uh, I am just going to essentially help you with uh, something you know like which is a good practice in uh, plotting Nyquist plot. So, you will see that say as opposed to a Bode diagram you know like for uh, when you want to plot the Nyquist plot of a general transfer function it is a little bit more challenging because uh, in the Bode plot what we did you give me any transfer function I break it down into those individual blocks and then essentially plot the magnitude and phase plot of the individual blocks add them that is it right. So, the technique was pretty uh, what to say straightforward right. So, but we need to of course, be careful in plotting the individual uh, factors of Bode diagram right. Uh, 
but in Nyquist plot we do not have that uh, what to say luxury right. So, you give me a higher order transfer function I need to essentially plot it as it is right. So, it becomes a little bit uh, more challenging to do it by hand ok. So, I am just going to essentially uh, share a process which has helped me you know like do these things right. So, we are not going to look at uh, Nyquist plots of very complex factors uh, uh, at least uh, you know like uh, when we discuss things analytically because I am not going to ask you to draw the Nyquist plot of you know like very high order factors by hand in your exams ok you, you can be assured of that. So, if I want you to analyze I would ask you to use MATLAB, but we should know what the concept is right. So, that is why I am uh, teaching you the uh, theory behind it right. So, uh, so one process which helps is to figure out what happens at critical frequencies right. So, and the limiting frequencies and even some frequencies are in between right. So, let us do that. So, typically it is useful uh, to construct a table you know like as to what happens uh, uh, to the real part of g of j omega and the imaginary part of g of j omega as we vary at various critical points uh, really critical values of omega and also its magnitude and uh, phase ok. So, let us say you we construct a table like this ok. So, so as uh, at as omega tends to 0 what do you think will happen to the real part and the imaginary part look at the real part what is the real part 1 divided by 1 plus uh, t squared omega squared right as omega tends to 0 what do you think will going to happen to this it is going to go to 1 right what can you say about the imaginary part 0 right please note that the imaginary part is always going to be uh, neg uh, negative right and the real part is going to be positive. So, in the complex plane uh, in which quadrant is uh, this Nyquist plot going to lie see you can see that for all omega between 0 and infinity because capital T obviously we take it to be of course, we take capital T B to be greater than 0 for this discussion right. So, uh, so uh, you can immediately observe that the real part is always uh, uh, what to say I would say non negative and the imaginary part is always non positive right for all values of omega between 0 and infinity right. So, which quadrant do you think the Nyquist plot of this factor would lie in in the complex plane in the this quadrant all right what is this quadrant called 1 2 3 or 4 fourth quadrant right. So, that is what it is right. So, essentially you will see that the Nyquist plot will lie uh, in this quadrant right. So, that is what will happen. So, now you tell me right what happens to the magnitude of g of g omega as omega tends to 0 obviously it is real path square plus uh, imaginary path square and then take the square root. So, the magnitude is going to be 1 what about the phase it is going to be 0 degrees all right as you go to 0. Now, uh, is there any other critical frequency you know like having uh, drawn the Bode diagram uh, can you think of any other critical frequency for first order factors. Uh, so, it is the corner frequency right 1 by capital T what happens is 1 by capital T to the real part and the imaginary part you see that the real part becomes 1 by 2 the imaginary part becomes minus 1 by 2 of course, I am not writing j if you are very particular you can write a minus j by 2, but I am just writing the component all right. So, j is un, it is understood that we have the j right. So, then uh, what happens to the magnitude and the phase magnitude is 1 by root 2 all right. What about the phase? going to be minus 45 right that is what else going to happen. So, let us continue this table ok ok. So, now as omega tends to infinity what do you think is going to happen to the real part and the imaginary part both will go to 0 right 0 and what do you think will happen to the phase 
it will essentially go to minus 90 we will see why ok. So, uh, so we will we are going to interpret it in a different way ok like we will see why that happens it happens like this ok. So, that is something which we will figure out when we draw the uh, Nyquist plot. So, let us uh, construct the Nyquist plot right. So, and then see what happens. So, I have the real axis the uh, imaginary axis right this is the g of s plane and uh, we want to plot the Nyquist plot right. So, now I if I want to plot the Nyquist plot of this uh, uh, function right. So, I know I know that there are certain critical points right. So, 1 is 1 critical point uh, 1 by 2 is 1 critical point right. So, because at 1 by uh, uh, when at frequency of capital 1 by t you know like we are having the real part as 1 by 2 and the imaginary part as minus uh, j by 2 right. So, and then like 0 and 0 is also important because that is what happens when omega tends to uh, infinity right. So, this is omega tending to 0. Now, uh, what happens to the Nyquist plot of this particular uh, factor ok. We have identified 3 points right. Now, I need to draw a curve which passes through these 3 points right. So, uh, uh, of course, you know like given these 3 points I can draw so many curves right. So, we will see that this Nyquist plot has one specific structure right. How do we get that right. So, let us let us uh, try it out. So, uh, what we will do is that like uh, you evaluate and tell me what you get uh, when you take the real part which is 1 divided by 1 plus t squared omega squared subtract half from it uh, take the square and then like you take the imaginary part square which is minus t omega divided by 1 plus uh, t squared omega square and square it and then like uh, if you equate it what do you get can you quickly solve and tell me. minus uh, t omega times the real part yes. So, if you are plotting imaginary part versus real part, mm. will this be a set of lines which slope minus t omega and as omega keeps varying which slope keeps varying. Ah, okay. So, uh, you are uh, see you uh, please note that the real part and the imaginary part are parameters with respect to omega. So, in fact what is going to happen is that what you are saying is uh, correct if I plot for a particular omega and I vary the real part, but does not work like that. See what you are saying is that you are saying imaginary part is minus t omega times the real part ok. If you plot real and imaginary if you take the real part on the abscissa and the imaginary part on the ordinate you will essentially get a series of straight lines you know like for any uh, for a para family of omega, but then we are not varying real part see real part is not the independent parameter here omega is. So, for a given omega the real part is not under our uh, uh, what to say control you know we get we get what it is is it clear ok yeah. Ah, so please uh, you will understand why I did that right I am asking you to evaluate it kindly uh, simplify this and tell me what answer you get. Yeah. See I, I have given you this because I a priori know what is the answer right. So, I am just asking you to do it and tell me. One by four, right? I have rewritten it as one by two whole square. Okay. So, what does this equation correspond to? So, if you recall our geometry, right? So, what is such an equation? Ah, it, it essentially, uh, it this equation will trace out a circle, right? Which is centered at one by two comma zero, right? And of radius. 1 by 2 right and that is what is the 
uh, Nyquist plot here. Okay, so this starts like this. Okay, of course, I'm drawing a free hand diagram. So please pardon if it doesn't look like a semicircle. You know, like so. Essentially, it goes something like this, right? So it's uh, so the Nyquist plot of this factor is going to be a semicircle. You know, like which is essentially going to be centered at one by two uh, and starts at one zero and ends at zero comma zero. Okay, so that's going to be the Nyquist plot. So the uh, I am going to draw an arrow like this to indicate what happens as omega uh, increases from 0 to infinity, right. So, that is what is the Nyquist plot of this particular uh, factor 1 by t j omega plus 1, right. So, that is the uh, uh, Nyquist uh, plot, okay. Is it clear how we got it? Of course, when we ask the question, hey, how did you get this in the first place, right? How did you uh, what to say pull out uh, you know this equation and write you know like of course that comes with experience okay. So, there is no uh, hard and uh, straight answer to that that is why you know plotting Nyquist plot is both art and science right as you as you keep on doing more examples you get an intuitive feel of what would happen you know how that factor would look like and sometimes it is going to be very non intuitive you know I will tell you why right. So, it, that will become clear as soon as we uh, plot the next factor okay. So, that is something which I which we will uh, discuss shortly right. So, it so happens that the Nyquist uh, plot of this 1 by T s plus 1 is going to be in the form of a, a semicircle uh, of radius 1 by 2 okay. So, that is that is the Nyquist plot. So, uh, let us we will gain some insight into this process and why Nyquist plots you know like are a little bit more challenging you know like once we do the next factor which is the reciprocal of this 1 by T s plus 1 right. See when we plotted Bode diagrams right what did we observe if we have two factors which are the reciprocals of one another what happened to the Bode diagram? They happen to be just uh, mirror images or reflections about the uh, 0 decibel line right. So, based on how we took it right. So, essentially our low frequencies values were the 0 decibel lines about that line it was just a mirror image of course. Uh, we need to be careful there, right. So, of course, if I took 1 by s and s, it is also a reflection about that uh, uh, what to say uh, 0 decibels and omega equals 1 point, right. So, it just flips gets flipped uh, about that, right, about the 0 decibel line which passes through that point, right, okay. So, now let us see what happens in the Nyquist plot, right. So, this is g of s. So, what, what happens to g of j omega? Uh, it is essentially 1 plus j times t omega. So, this will give me the magnitude as 1 plus uh, t squared omega squared and the phase is going to be just tan inverse of t omega. See by the way uh, uh, before we go any further I hope it is clear why this this uh, phase was minus 90 right. So, you look at how this curve comes to 0. So, if you look at how this uh, Nyquist plot comes to 0 approaches the origin you see that it approaches origin if you zoom in at the origin it comes in like this right. So, if you zoom in further and further if you draw a vector from the origin to that curve that is going to be at an angle of minus 90 okay. So, that is how we put uh, that is why I put minus 90 there is it clear okay why uh, uh, this happened right. So, that is the reason for the phase becoming minus 90 as omega tends to infinity for the uh, factor 1 by ds plus 1. Okay, so this is what happens uh, here, right? And uh, now let's construct a similar table, right? Omega, uh, real part of g of j omega, uh, the imaginary part of g of j omega, the uh, magnitude of g of j omega, and the phase of g of j. Okay, so, let us construct a table uh, in this manner. Okay. So, let us start filling in this table using a similar approach. Okay, so, let us say as omega tends to 0 what happens to the real part and the imaginary part 1 0 1 0 degrees right the magnitude is 1 phase is 0 degrees. So, at omega equals uh, now 1 by t what happens? You will get 1, 1 right 
root 2 and 45 correct. Then as omega tends to infinity what do you get? 1 infinity infinity 90 right that is what you will have am I correct ok. So, I am just looking at the equation above you know that is all we are doing right. See this is the real part see if you look at it the real part is always 1 for this particular factor. The imaginary factor uh, imaginary part is t times omega right the magnitude is this and the phase is this ok. So, you see that I, I am just calculating for various omega you know I am just uh, writing the values down that is all we are doing ok nothing uh, extraordinary here right. So, just a pretty straightforward. So, now if I plot uh, the real part versus the imaginary part in the g of s plane uh, what are we going to get? What will happen at omega equal 0 let us say uh, we we start from 1. So, please note that the real part is always 1 you could um, re, uh, what is say readily observe that right. So, because you can see that the real part of the sinusoidal this factor is always 1. So, what can you say about this uh, curve? If the real part is 1 what can you say and the imaginary part is always non negative. So, what can we immediately say about this one? This is going to be a vertical line right starting at uh, 1 comma 0 and then just going up you know which is parallel to the imaginary axis this is what happens as omega uh, tends to infinity right at omega equals 1 by t it is going to be j right. So, that is what is going to happen ok sorry is this correct at omega equals 1 by t the real part is 1 and the imaginary part is uh, j right and so the magnitude is going to be uh, root 2 ok then the phase is going to be 45 degrees right. So, I am just uh, drawing it on the same curve right. So, just to convince ourselves that that is the case. So, you see that this is the uh, what is a Nyquist plot of the factor T s plus 1. Now, you look at the Nyquist plot of the factor 1 by T s plus 1 and T s plus 1. Can you draw some conclusions like what we did in the Bode plot? No, right. One is a semicircle, another is a straight line. So, now you understand, you know, like why progressively we are slowly understanding, right. Why in the Nyquist plot is a drawing a Nyquist plot is a different ball game, right. And sometimes it is, it is a bit of a challenge. Right. So, in Bode diagram you know like if you had like uh, reciprocals uh, you know like we immediately flip the curve right. So, uh, and uh, we could immediately process it and go on, but here it is not so uh, straightforward because the shape itself is uh, different.